welcome to Adult Speech Therapy. My name is Donata Davis. I am a licensed speech language pathologist, and today I want to help you understand how to read your modified barium swallow study test, as well as understand the significance of the terminology within your report. I'll briefly describe what the swallowing test is, how it's done, the objective information that we as SOPs obtain from the test, and an explanation of the medical terminology that we use to describe it. Clinically, this test helps us, the speech language pathologist, determine which phase or phases of your swallow are impaired, the severity of the impairment, and the best treatment strategies or diet modifications to ensure swallowing safety and efficiency. All right, now let's discuss some common terminology that you may come across on your MBSS report. Let's start with the easiest, which is Severity. So the severity of your swallowing impairment will be listed as either functional, mild, mild to moderate, moderate, moderate to severe, or severe. This depends on how much the swallow is actually affected and how safe and efficient it is. Oral dysphagia refers to difficulty in the oral phase of swallowing. This can happen due to poor acceptance or interior loss of food or liquid from your lips, difficulty chewing, pocketing or scattering of food in your mouth, poor tongue movement from the front to the back, or reduced tongue pressure generation. Pharyngeal dysphagia refers to difficulty in the pharyngeal phase of swallowing, and this may occur due to poor closure between the nasal cavity and throat, leading to nasal regurgitation, reduced airway closure, which can increase the risk of aspiration, weak or uncoordinated movement of food and liquid through the throat, reduced elevation and forward movement of your airway, or incomplete opening of your esophagus. Oral pharyngeal dysphagia means that there's an impairment in both the oral and the pharyngeal phase of swallowing. Prolonged mastication means it takes longer than normal to chew and prepare your food, before you swallow. Bolus formation refers to how food is mechanically transformed into a round cohesive ball or mush before you swallow. It's kind of similar to the IDDSI level five minced and moist foods. Delayed oral transit means that there's a delay in moving the bolus from the front of the mouth to the back of the mouth where the swallowing actually begins. Lingual pumping refers to the rocking back and forth motion of the tongue during your swallow. So instead of the normal smooth movement from front to back that the tongue typically does in a normal swallow, it doesn't, it kind of rocks back and forth. And sometimes this is typically seen in a person who has Parkinson's disease. Oral clearance is the complete removal of all food and or liquid from the mouth after swallowing. So a timely swallow response means that the swallow is triggered at the appropriate time once the bolus reaches the back of the mouth. A delayed swallow response means the bolus sits too long before the swallow starts. So epiglottic inversion, this refers to the flipping motion of the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a cartilage flap that covers your airway during the swallow to keep food and liquid out. Reduced inversion can increase your aspiration risk. Base of tongue retraction, this is how well the back of the tongue pushes against the pharyngeal wall, pharyngeal wall being the back of your throat, to drive the bolus downward. Reduced retraction may cause residue in your throat. An osteophyte is a bony growth on the spine that can press on the esophagus or pharynx, pharynx being your throat area, and interfere with swallowing. Periform sinus residue, this refers to leftover food or liquid that collects in small pockets called periform sinuses. This can be located on either side of your throat. Gross aspiration, this means a large amount of food or liquid enters the airway and passes below the vocal folds often without an effective cough to clear it. Incomplete laryngeal closure means the vocal folds don't fully close during a swallow, which allows material to enter into the airway. Reduced pharyngeal clearance means that the throat muscles do not completely clear out the food or liquid, leaving, again, behind residue. Aspiration is when food, liquid, or saliva enters below the vocal folds and into the airway. And this can cause coughing, choking, or even pneumonia if not managed. A trial compensatory strategy. This is any technique that's tested during the study to help improve safety, such as postures, maneuvers, or even diet changes. A chin tuck is a specific posture where the chin is tucked down toward the chest during your swallow. This can help protect the airway and reduce aspiration for some patients. A supraglottic maneuver, this is a breath hold technique that's used to help close the airway before and during your swallow. 
You're typically taught to hold your breath, then swallow, then cough right after. A peg placement, this refers to the feeding tube placed directly into the stomach for optimal nutrition when swallowing by mouth is unsafe. If it's determined from your results that swallowing by mouth is unsafe because you have moderate to severe or severe dysphagia, then a peg tube most likely will be recommended. Esophageal dysmotility means the muscles in the esophagus aren't moving properly, which can cause food to move slowly or to even get stuck. Tracheal aspiration, this occurs when food or liquid travels down into the trachea, which is your windpipe. Dystonic tremulous movements, these are involuntary or shaky movements often seen in neurological conditions such as Parkinson's disease, which can overall affect swallowing coordination. Piecemeal deglutition, this means swallowing one bolus in multiple smaller swallows instead of a single complete swallow. Vallecula, this is a small space between the base of the tongue and the epiglottis where food or liquid may temporarily collect before swallowing. You have two molecular spaces, one on the left and one on the right. Hyolaryngeal excursion and elevation. This refers to the upward and forward movement of the hyoid bone and larynx during swallowing. It's essential for airway protection and opening of the upper esophageal sphincter. The upper esophageal sphincter might also be hyphenated as UES, and essentially it's just a band of tissue that helps to open up the esophagus. Prandial airway protection. This means airway protection during eating and drinking. Prandial simply means during a meal. Pharyngeal motility. This refers to the coordination and strength of the muscle contractions that move food and liquid down throughout your throat. Cricopharyngeal sphincter. This is also called the upper esophageal sphincter. It's the muscle at the top of the esophagus that relaxes to let food and liquid pass through during your swallow. Laryngeal penetration, this means food or liquid enters the airway but stays above the vocal fold. It can often be cleared by coughing or throat clearing. Laryngeopharyngeal reflux, this is when acid or stomach contents travel back up into the throat and larynx causing irritation and coughing. Viscosity simply just refers to the thickness of liquid. Thicker liquids often move slower and can be easier for some people with dysphagia to control. Pharyngeal stasis refers to residue remaining in the throat after your swallow. It may signal weak pharyngeal muscles or poor bolus clearance. Spillover in the oropharynx. This occurs when food or liquid spills prematurely into the throat before the swallow is triggered, increasing the aspiration risk. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you spending the time with me today to learn more about how to read your modified barium swallow study test. If this was of value to you, I would truly appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up and also share with the person that you had in mind while you were watching this video. My next upcoming videos will be about swallowing disorders, some signs and symptoms that you might see at home, how we classify swallowing disorders, an explanation of the normal swallow. So what is the oral phase? What is the pharyngeal phase? What is the esophageal phase? And also an explanation of a bedside swallow. So what does that even mean? What does it mean that you need a swallowing evaluation, but you have to see a speech language pathologist first, right? Um, what are the typical steps? How does this get done. I want to explain all of that stuff to you. So go ahead and subscribe if that type of information will be valuable to you. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care.